look at the shoot. Fires yeah. from the top of the key and takes it home. The Liberty take a two-point lead. Welcome to Liberty FM, the podcast dedicated to all things New York Liberty. I'm Felicia, and I'm joined by my co-host and husband, Francois. This is episode 16, recapping a week where the Liberty faced, for the final time in the regular season, two teams they might face in the playoffs, the Las Vegas Aces and the Connecticut Sun, and one team battling for a playoff spot, the Chicago Sky. There's quite a bit to get into, so let's start with last Monday's game against the Aces. And so let's start with the uh, last big matchup between the two super teams, the Las Vegas Aces and the New York Liberty. And I think what was striking in this game is to see the growth of the New York Liberty. I think when we look at the the first quarter, things were not necessarily working well for the Liberty. Uh, Asia Wilson uh, was finding a groove with a couple of mid-range. Jackie Young uh, seemed like she deliberately um, you know, attacked Sabrina um, on the mismatch. Um, JJ was in foul troubles very quickly, so um, the Aces had a 15-7 um, you know, advantage in the first quarter to begin with. And so you were kind of wondering, and Stewie on top of that was not shooting particularly well, so you were really wondering mm-hmm. how the Liberty were going to respond to you know, an Aces team that hasn't you know, particularly played well uh, in Brooklyn the last time around. Um, but this time around, the Liberty don't rely solely on, on Stewie anymore. They have a lot of weapons. And so my question is like, what, what did you particularly notice in terms of growth uh, from the Liberty against the Aces? It's definitely their fight. You know, I think one of the things, especially when these two teams play, I think they they battle it out. You know, I think sometimes you see two teams, like two top teams, and they bring out the best in each other. Mm. You know, I think, you know, the Aces had a really strong start, but for the Liberty, they've worked this season on on that growing together, buying into the system, buying into their roles. And you see now that it's paying off because they started to rely on their defense. Mm. You know, they didn't break, you know, by being in like a 15-7 hole. They just switched it up and they got real aggressive on defense. They got consecutive um, turnovers that started to really help them get back on offensively, you know. And I think that from the team we saw early in the season to who they are now, you know, obviously we've always said this. In the beginning of the season, you weren't sure. We're like, let's see. You know, the first couple games against the Aces, you're like, I don't know. Hmm. But now it's like I can see them winning a chip. I can totally see them winning their grit is just it's there Mm. and they're just building and the fact that they're still building they can totally win it this year definitely i think was what was very striking was when uh john cole jones had to go on a bench because she had two Mm. quick fouls Mm. and so she was the mvp of the commissioner's cup and played a big part in that win but then the regular season game two days later when Mm. she got three fouls that was the turning point of the game so uh, what was interesting when, um, you know, if you watch the game on, on ESPN, uh, they mentioned that when uh, John Cole Jones defends uh, Asia Wilson, she's 1 for 12. So that shows how important John Cole Jones is uh, for the Liberty and try to slow down Asia Wilson, who I had said like in the previous podcast that to me that was the, the key uh, matchup is to be able to slow down Asia. But... John Cole went on the bench, and I didn't feel like the, the Liberty really suffered from it because they decided to really defend as a team. And like you, mm-hmm. you said, you know, defending really hard, uh, very aggressive on the players. Uh, we know Benajah is going to do a thing against uh, Chelsea Gray, making oh, it a lot boy, really she? difficult. <laughs> Kelsey Plum was really struggling all night, and... I, you know, I can't help but thinking it was a mixture of, you know, bad shot decisions and also great defense from the Liberty. And when the Liberty plays fast on, on the fast break from, you know, stealing the ball, it definitely makes their life easier and they don't have to rely on freeze or Stewie doing everything. And so I think that that really set the, the tone, um, you know, of that game for, for the Liberty and giving them a chance to, to win that game. But... 
Now we have to talk about one player, uh, Sabrina Ionescu. Mm-hmm. I think now it's really, really time, and we mentioned it several times now in this podcast, to put some respect on Sabrina Ionescu's name. Yes, you could have some type of feelings about some of the uh, things that she managed to get, um, you know, in terms of uh, endorsements and everything like that, and maybe, uh, you know, undeservedly compared to players that have done more in the league. But now her game has started to speak for itself. She's having, obviously, a a record-breaking three-point season and on the verge of tying or beating Diana Torres' records. But she's also now attacking the paint. And remember that the first months, uh, she kept getting blocked when she would Mm -hmm. attack the basket by centers. And she was mentioning the fact that sometimes she would look for a pass and then realize she's open. But then, you know, this last second decisions would cause her to get blocked. But uh, Miles Ehrlich, uh, one of the journalists that follows the Liberty, had this very interesting stats where he said that Sabrina has been a different player inside the arc in August, hitting 49.1% of her shots inside the arc after knocking down just 32.7% in the first three months of the season. And what contributed to that change, uh, she said that she credits a recent success as a counter to aggressive closeouts. She said that I'm just looking to score early on. I was driving, looking to a pass and realizing I was open too late. And now I'm understanding that if I can apply pressure, it opens up the floor for everyone. And she was amazing in that game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not only scoring a lot of frees, but attacking Asia Wilson, attacking Kia Stokes, who are among the best defenders of this league. Uh, How impressive was that to see the growth and and how decisive she was against the Aces. I mean, you definitely got got to give Sabrina respect, even going at Asia Wilson. Because, you know, most times, you know, when people go up against Asia, there's a high probability you're going to get blocked. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> there is a high probability. As Joko Jones, I think she got yeah. frustrated a few times with, yeah. uh, Malcolm, with Asia. JJ got blocked, I think, a couple of times <laughs> by Asia in this game. So just to see Sabrina... Be creative, you know, in the paint. Go at Asia, but, you know, make some switches and not be afraid to to get blocked. And she, she managed to not get blocked too many times and, and, and make some important buckets. And so, yeah, for Sabrina, just all that she's doing to better herself in this game, mm. you know, so she's not just a three-point threat and realizing now, like, oh, I can get open in the paint too. Mm. I need to make better quality shots, when especially if I'm going up against a big. And so, you know, I think Sabrina has come – a long way in these last couple of years and she the sky's the limit for her Mm. you know and I think it is true that she gets a lot of criticism and I I, you know especially for players who have won championships and they don't get the accolades that she gets and Mm. but I think what she is doing all this stuff is well deserved she is a talent she is an amazing amazing um player with the liberty and with Stewie and Slew and everyone else just understanding their roles, it has opened up for her to just blossom this year. Mm. Really, with with the additions that they have on this team, it's really helped Sabrina to just blossom and focus on her game and not being the main scorer. Mm. She doesn't have to worry about being the main scorer, carrying the ball up. Like She doesn't have to have all that pressure. Now she can focus in, and I think she's done really well um this season and you can see 17 points in the first half you could tell they were trying to come at her but she she was aggressive she went to the hole a couple of times and and she found success so kudos to her sabrina you're doing it girl yeah and i think what was very telling was um uh the post game uh interview with becky ammon where it was the first time where i felt like she was sort of like admitting that the Liberty were just a, a better team. And when she was asked about uh, the fact that, you know, did, she, did they have a plan about Sabrina? And she said, believe it or not, she was the, the focus point, uh, you know, of their, you know, of their game. Anybody uh, but Sabrina. <laughs> yeah, anybody but Sabrina. And, you know, the fact that she had 17 points in the first half, obviously it didn't work out the way the Aces had planned. And she literally said that, you know, it was unacceptable. Um, Sabrina got to score 
quote unquote only eight points in the in the second half, but the damage was already done. And uh, usually Becky Hammond doesn't you know tend to really admit her uh, game plans or admit like weaknesses because obviously they're the the defending champ. But I think now like they're starting to really see the the liberty as a fresh which wasn't the case before. I don't think they respected that much Sabrina, to be honest, when you look at the first game, the way they attacked her. Uh, Jackie Young attacked her quite a few times in the first quarter, but then after that, Sabrina was holding her own uh, in the second half, so it was beautiful to see. But let's look at, at the second half now, and the word that comes to mind is is versatility for the, the New York Liberty. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a couple of players in mind, Benajah Laney, um, Stewie, Brianna Stewart, who was having a tough shooting night, but find a way uh, to contribute in many other ways. And then even to some degree, John Quill Jones. Even though, uh, you know, we were at the stadium and sometimes we were getting frustrated because I felt like she needed to be a little more decisive in the pain. And I feel like Asia Wilson was getting into her head, blocking her a few times. But she managed to do other things. Yes, she mm-hmm. was frustrated in offense, but all the rebounds, who was grabbing those rebounds? John Cole Jones. Who was helping in the paint and blocking shots? John Cole Jones. Mm-hmm. So the versatility of the team has been a really uh, beautiful thing to watch. And in that second half, I think that was the key to you know, get the win against the Aces. Yeah, I think that's the growth of the Liberty, though. You know, I think... When you see some some teams in this league when things might not be going their way, whether it's unfair foul calls or you think, you know, just certain plays aren't going your way, you're not getting the calls you're hoping for, it can it can get to you and take mm-hmm. you off your game, and then you're you're not focused, your your head's not in the game, and you know there was one play um, in particular where I have to give Benajah Laney credit, like. She clearly thought she was fouled. Yeah. And she went down. The play continued on. The Aces got the ball. Everybody was running back up court. And she was still down. You could tell she kind of slapped the the court because she was mad. But everybody got back on defense. They Mm -hmm. were like, you know, no calls made. We can't. We just got to go. We can't sit here and try to yell at the refs. And, And so... You know, um, Chelsea Gray got the ball. Stewie's defending. She passes. um, uh, Three ball goes up. All of a sudden, here comes Benijah. All of a sudden, she's racing up court. She manages to get the rebound. Starts a fast break with Sloot. Passes to Sloot. Sloot gets it back to her, and she makes the shot. And so... It was just such a great play by Benijah because, yeah, she quickly recovered from being mad. She could have stayed down there um, on the other end when you had this fast break for the Aces, but she didn't. She got back in the game. She refocused. And I think that's the thing for the Liberty is that no matter what happens, they know I got to still I got to keep my head in this game. Hmm. I have to use other ways of affecting this game if the shot's not going down then i'm gonna fight for that rebound i'm gonna get that steal i'm gonna block i'm gonna do all the other things to maybe get my teammates an opportunity even if it's not coming my way right now and i think that is overall what i've seen with the liberty not just benijah you see stewie like stewie wasn't having a great shooting night yeah she was she 0 for also- 7 0 for 7 at the free point line uh, nine for twenty five. Uh, uh, nine for 20, 23 overall. Yeah, but you saw her in this game. She had a couple blocks. She had a block on Asia. She's getting rebounds. She's just looking for her teammates also because she will still draw attention. Her for her and Sabrina, those are your top two scorers. Mm. They're gonna draw a lot of attention. So she knew that. And even if her shots weren't going down, she's still looking for her teammates, and they were backing her up. And so you know that's the thing that you see the growth of the Liberty now that. They have all bought into their roles, and they've all excelled in their roles, and they are just getting better and better. And so, when one player, when one player is not having the great game that they want, the other player will step up and help out and and help to manage whatever that deficit may be. And so, you saw the Liberty come back and you know take over this game from what the second quarter on, and they never yeah. let it go. Yeah, and. Uh... 
What was great, I feel, also in this game, because once again, uh, the New York Liberty uh, beat a record of attendance for a women's game at the Barclays Center with 11,615 people coming to this game, was the fact that they were pushing for their players, you know, in terms of awards at the end of the season. Uh, we saw when we got off the, the subway station that uh, the Liberty had the uh, pizza food truck uh, showing highlights of Stewie and also promoting uh, Benaja Lini as Defensive Player of the Year. And then we had this wonderful, uh, you know, short documentary on, on YouTube from the New York Liberty uh, focusing on Benaja Lini and the work ethic. And I think that having her being interviewed and sharing about her experience and finding a new role in the team this year and showing a lot of highlights and slow motions as well, you see the determination on her face mm -hmm. and, you know, the way she just, you know, follows Chelsea Gray all game long. She had that play, I think, where, I think you mentioned it, where she grabbed that rebound, uh, uh, shot, missed the shot, and then put it back in again. And then right after, instead of just bragging about it or being too happy about it, she was right on Chelsea's uh, great face and be like, okay, that's my assignment. I'm not gonna leave her. Um, and that was just all game long to see her determination and her grit it was incredible. And I'm so glad that everybody uh, did that, um, you know, short documentary on YouTube highlighting her work ethic and, and how crucial she is for that team. And like you said as well, uh, you know, now they're, they're doing that extra push for Stewie as the MVP. It's, it's really hard to figure out what's the definition of an MVP, but when we look at Stewie, she's definitely the definition of MVP because, you know, when you your shots are not getting in, you could, you know, lose confidence, but not Stewie. She does so many other things as well. Uh, passing the ball, blocking, um, you know, stealing the ball. You know, she was plus eight uh, at the end of the game despite you know, her troubles um, on the, at the three-point line. And that's, that's a true sign of an MVP. She does so many things that help the team win. And in the end, we got the win. Uh, even though the Aces made a, a little comeback towards the end, we got the win, 94 to 85. And, you know, talking about uh, the versatility of that team, I almost forgot uh, Marian Johannes as well, mm -hmm. um, uh, who was sort of uh, compared to a, a sort of quick assassin uh, by Becky Hammond, like, you know, coming on the court, uh, sort of taking care of business, couple of freeze, couple of like mid-range, pop, pop, and then she goes back on the bench and next thing you know, that created a little gap for, for the Liberty. Uh, and she had probably, you know, for me was what was the most exciting play of the season so far, where uh, Sydney Coulson uh, was defending on her, and she had this sort of crossover where she passed the ball behind her back, and then had the sort of step back free with her usual trajectory with the ball that goes in the air for so long. Mm -hmm. And the crowd went wild after that play. And she was so casual about it. That's the, the craziest part. She does things that nobody else can do, and she acts like, you know, it's just normal. Yeah, she just plays her game. You know, I think the crowd loves Maureen and she just she just comes in when she's called. She plays her game. And, you know, Becky Hammond did give a good assessment. She is like <laughs> an assassin when you think about it because she'll come in for a few minutes and have a couple of shots, maybe create a lead. She'll also, she's kind of like slew in a way with the steal sometimes. Mm. Or, slew, or similar with, yeah. they're, they're a bit sneaky on defense at times. And so... You know, she comes in, does her job, and it's just so good to see even her, for Maureen, to have such confidence now. You know, she had a stretch where the shots weren't going down, and now she's in a great rhythm. And, and so coming off the bench, it, it's still wild to me that she comes off the bench. She really would be a starter anywhere else in this Anywhere league. else, yeah. Um, but, yeah, coming off the bench, doing what she can do, and that play, that play was nasty. She disrespectful. But... <laughs> And she and she just seems so humble with it. Afterwards, she just goes, she runs back on defense. Like, yeah. I, I don't I know that. many players that would be so humble after a play like that. I think they would like talk trash to the player that was defending on them and just like banging about it all throughout the game. But no, she's just like you know, 
go around, you know, go as She's business like, as usual. I, I you know? just do my thing and yeah. I do it when I'm called. And then, you know, I go back on the bench and root for my team. And that's, yeah. and that's it. And so, you know, it, it's just great to see her getting more minutes out there and, and just seeing. And I also think for the Liberty, the difference between the Liberty and the Aces, it's the bench. Mm. You know, I think what we're seeing and maybe, you know, before the playoffs, you know, everybody will have a little bit of time and maybe that will help both teams. But I think definitely for the Liberty, their bench is a lot better than the Aces bench. And, yeah. the, you know, I was always wondering, like, how are they going to go the whole season with just the starters, and you and they do have a couple of players. They got like one or two players on the bench, like Alicia Clark, mm. and um, but after that, it, it it gets a little dicey with the players they have. And so, you know, I don't know if fatigue is really setting in for the Aces or what, or it's just two top teams going at it, and you know, the Liberty are just the better team at this point. Um, yes, the you could argue that the Aces had a tough schedule um they had a lot of games uh you know in those past few weeks but you could argue that the liberty you know a couple of weeks ago had also a tremendous uh a very active schedule and you know still managed to beat the aces in the commissioner's cup so every team is going to go through those those crazy schedule but with candace parker uh being out for an unknown amount of time it definitely feels like, you know, the Aces are vulnerable now. And now that the Liberty, uh, they seem to have figured out a few things out as a team, but also uh, what to do against the, the Aces, um, they can literally now look them in the eyes and say that, you know, I think we, are, we have a good chance. And I think that's the, the first time where I really feel like, you know, the Liberty can really win that title. Um, but that's the beauty of basketball. It's like as, as, you know, dominant you can be in the regular season comes to playoffs time, as Sloot said recently, you know, everybody starts from scratch and it's a new season. So mm -hmm. you definitely obviously, uh, you know, click by the time you reach the playoff. But, um, you know, the playoff would be a different ball game. But if the Liberty play the way they've been playing lately, and especially against the Aces, you know, sky's the limit. So... Uh, it was a great win overall, and uh, and a couple of days later, uh, they were facing one of the other top teams of the league, uh, the Connecticut Sun, for the last time. So I was definitely looking forward to that matchup to see where we were at after that crazy comeback uh, in Connecticut. So let's move on now and talk about this game against the Connecticut Sun. And before we talk about uh, this game, uh, two news, uh, piece of news came up uh, before the game. First of all, uh, the New York Liberty extended Kayla Fordon's contract for two more seasons for the Liberty. And that was definitely a great news because we don't talk enough about Kayla Fordon, but she's also been a, a crucial uh, piece to the team. And think about the fact that she was kind of thrown in the mix uh, in the... Uh, um, you know, trade with John Carl Jones coming, and then the Liberty had to give uh, Becca Allen to Connecticut, and then Natasha Edwards and Crystal Dangerfields to the Dallas Wings. That you know, they had to give something in return as well. Uh, and Kayla Foran uh, was definitely uh, a sort of uh, underrated uh, element uh, added to the mix. Um, and so the general manager of the Liberty, Jonathan Cobbs, uh, really praised her work ethic and character and, you know, all the things that she adds to the team. So that was definitely a great news because as fans, it's not something we think uh, a lot about, but there's a lot of players on that team that only signed for one year contract. Uh, Stewie and John Con Jones uh, have only signed for this year. And even though obviously uh, we hope and, and believe that they will resign for the team. The team still has to show them that this is the right fit for them. So I'm glad that the Liberty are, you know, sort of you know, getting ahead of the game and making sure that they sign important, uh, resign important players on the squad. But the other piece of news that we got that was not as uh, positive as Kate Foran's extension was the fact that Sabrina Unescu was going to miss that game for a right calf injury. Now, she did get to train, uh, you know, prior to the game, um, but I think they wanted to 
be cautious because this the end of the regular season is coming to an end very soon and you don't want to take uh, any risk uh, for the playoff. But, you know, once we got the news, Felicia, what what were you hoping or what did you sort of, you know, sort of fear in terms of missing Sabrina for this game when she's been such an important part of the Liberty's offense? I think, you know, I, I still believe the Liberty could win this game. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't doubting that. It was just who was going to step up. I was just wondering who's going to step up more um, in the lineup tonight now that Sabrina's not there. Obviously, you're not going to get all those threes that you were hoping yeah. to have. A lot of times, that's that's a huge part of the Liberty's game now. And so, yeah, you'll miss that part, but you definitely have more than sufficient players, excellent players who can step up and take that and take that role in in this game and and we saw that. I mean, all the players, all the starting players were in double figures point-wise and mm. so everyone contributed, everyone took up the slack with Sabrina not being there and they still played hard and they still had control of this game. And uh, Benajah Lini, I don't know how many times I'm going to mention her name. She stepped up huge. She stepped up huge, and she was basically the, the best scorer of the of the Liberty and of the game uh, with 19 points. Um, I mean, I really hope Benajah gets something uh, by the end of the season in terms of awards, um, you know, whether it's Defensive Player of the Year or at least, you know, the old defensive team or... You know, maybe not the all N- uh, WNBA team, but maybe the second team or third, uh, because uh, she's so incredible, um, so aggressive on offense. She could, you know, take those corner frees. She could attack the basket. Her ability to always find the mismatch, and you know, either post a player or quite a few times uh, in that game, she had to sort of be the point guard because. Yeah. Uh, usually you have Sabrina and Courtney Vandersloot on the court and then either one of them goes on the bench and Maureen will place uh, one of those two players. But with Sabrina out, uh, they kind of ask uh, Benaja to at times uh, carry the ball, which was sort of similar to the role she had uh, her first season with the Liberty. And even though it was obviously a great season because she uh, had, you know, she was the best offensive player of the team and got to the All-Star game, she had a tendency at times to turn over the ball because she had the ball on her hand so uh, so often. But I feel like she did a great job uh, against Connecticut, not rushing, uh, be able to read what the defense was offering to her and just be dominant. And that was really great to see. She... She, you know, is such in control of a game. And, you know, I feel like she really blossoming into, you know, the player that I'm sure she wanted it to be. Even though if you ask her, I'm sure she will tell you that she still has a lot of things to, to grow in a game. But uh, in uh, Sabrina's absence, Ben Ajeleni was definitely the force uh, of that game. And then once again, uh, Marine Joannis, you know, the... The, the silent assassin, um, who, you know, was, I think, it was the second time uh, only uh, this season that she was replacing Sabrina in the starting lineup. And I think the, the first time was against the Atlanta Dream, and uh, surprisingly the Dream had been us at home. But I think it was at a time when Maureen was kind of uncertain of a role in the team, trying to figure things out, because the roster, half of the roster was new. Um, so it kind of took time to gel. But she was also incredible, um, just, you know, just doing marine stuff, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, there was one free where she didn't even dribble. She just catched, caught the ball, just like fake, like, you know, make a, a defender believe that she was going to right. And then she kind of went back on the left and then had that uh, beautiful free. And then she had a, a one leg uh, step back shot in the, in the second half as well. That was incredible. And... You know, when we're in the stadium, we can see little things that maybe people on TV uh, don't get to see. And I think like uh, Dawson and, and Sloot were so impressed by what she had done. And they kind of talk about it in that nice little moment before the end of the 
of um, of a timeout. So when you have players like Benaja and Marin that are able to contribute the way they do offensively, that that's really gonna uh, help you tremendously. But let's not forget that Connecticut was playing uh, a back to back, and they kind of looked tired. But I think the Liberty kind of was able to pinpoint what they needed to do to really like you know make the the life really difficult for the sun i think just by pushing the sun you know they look tired you yeah. know they are coming off a of back-to-back and it's not easy i mean Alyssa thomas plays her minutes are i don't know she has the most minutes in the league played, yeah. but she definitely plays entire games typically, and I think we joke like, "Oh, even though it's a back-to-back, she'll still play over thirty minutes." <laughs> um, she only played twenty-six minutes in that game. Yeah, but I think by by that point, though, the Liberty were, they were running away with it. She also, I think, picked up a lot of fouls right in the first half. So by the second half, she picked up her fourth foul to start the third. Yeah, um, and so. You know, at that point, you see, I think for the coach on the Connecticut Sun side, you could tell your players are tired. They're not pushing with pace like they normally do. Mm. And the Liberty were definitely doing that, and they were squeezing them for sure defensively. Everybody, you know, Marine opens up the floor, you know, because with how quick she is, um, she can get you from anywhere. She can stop, pop a three. She can take it to the basket and have a nice mid-range shot for one leg she can have these incredible passes so you you have to respect her in that in that way and so you know and then Benija, I think yeah she's just if this girl does not get defensive player of the year (laughs) or just even be in the conversation be in the running yeah I would be shocked Mm -hmm. she really defensively she locks people down and it's just great to see and it's great to see that she got the most points and was pretty much the player of this game but everyone contributed and that Mm. was the thing for the liberty is that everybody contributed even their bench contributed you know everybody pretty much got points i think the only person that didn't get a point was willoughby but everyone contributed in some way offensively and that just helped the liberty overall to push this win over the sun yeah, and I think uh, also I'm, I'm thinking about uh, Courtney Van der Sloot. Like, it's almost like she smelled blood, smelled blood of a wounded animal and was just upping up the tempo even more and more. And the Connecticut Sun just had no response to that. Um, so many assists that she gave to an open player, uh, even Benaja or Stewie. And now you realize that, you know, Stewie and Van der Sloot are... Uh, the best offensive duo in the league, uh, you know, above Asia Wilson and Chelsea Gray. So we know that they're going to find each other almost instinctively. Um, so I feel like Van der Sloot, like, you know, she rectifies some of the things that was going on in the, you know, pr- couple of weeks uh, ago. And we were mentioning how, you know, worried we were a little bit with uh, Courtney. But, you know, now she's locked in and, and, she really like set the tone of the team, especially in the second half. And there were a couple of times where Connecticut had to literally take a timeout where probably the coach was so angry with the, I wouldn't even say lack of defense. It's just that they had no uh, weapons, um, you know, mm-hmm. uh, to use against uh, the, the Liberty's tempo. So I definitely wasn't expecting such a big blowout uh, at the end of this game because when you look at the score, you know, they won by 31, 31 points, um, 89 to 58. Um, and so I think, you know, I can't recall the last time uh, the Liberty swept a, a series against the Connecticut Sun because we won the four games this season. And with some of the games, you know, except obviously that crazy overtime game, by quite a large margin overall. So... Um, obviously, uh, Dijon Carrington wasn't uh, playing for that game uh, with a foot injury and Brianna Jones was out for the season. But I feel like now the Liberty have definitely, um, you know, taken the momentum against the Sun. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if that also plays uh, an important role uh, in the playoff because you know how to beat that team. And, uh, you know, I was saying that the Connecticut Sun has definitely... Uh, uh, a contestant, but you know, like now they, they've shown weaknesses that I'm not sure they'll be able to 
uh, rectify come playoffs time, even though I hope they're a tough team to beat. But, uh, but I also think the Liberty, you know, when you're looking at the Liberty now, you know, in the last 10 games, they're 9-1. No. They lead the WNBA pretty much in all stats. And so the one thing that I definitely see with the Liberty – is that, you know, some of the things they've talked about all season is believing in in each other, believing in the system, growing together, gelling together. And I think now they see that they're gelling together and they have excelled in their roles. They see that they could win this. Mm. They really, I think, see, like, we could really win this whole thing. And you could just see the shift. Like, yeah, some people may have off games here and there, but they're still working to do anything else. So if somebody is not getting their shots, they're fighting for rebounds. They're going to have assists. They they got numbers somewhere else to help the team and so to help the team win. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's the biggest shift for me seeing the Liberty. It's like you look at them and you know, like, yeah, the Aces are a tough team, but... These other teams, not just the Aces, but Connecticut and other teams are, are tough teams. But you can tell the Liberty have just a different swagger. They have a different mm. mindset from where they were um, at the beginning of the season. All right. So, you know, we took care of business. We beat uh, the number one seed and the third seed. And so after that win, um, there was no way for Connecticut to uh, catch up the Liberty. So the Liberty will end the season at least... Uh, at the second spot of the regular season. Uh, they still have a tiny chance to catch the, the Aces for the first seed, but it's really it's going to be really hard. Um, the Aces have a pretty light schedule to finish the season. They just beat the Storm uh, this past weekend, and they have two games left against uh, the Phoenix Mercury, who are out of the playoff race and have been struggling lately. So I really don't see uh, the Aces losing one of those games. Um, but, you know, second seed, when we see how the, the team started, is definitely uh, a tremendous achievement. It's only the second team with that win also, um, you know, or we'll talk about the next game, but to reach 30 wins uh, in the regular season for in the history of the WNBA. So definitely a lot of things to be proud of. So we're going to move on now to uh, the game against the Chicago Sky that happened uh, this past Sunday. And so obviously... The New York Liberty have their spot in the in the playoff, and you know very likely will finish as the second seed. But the Chicago Sky had a lot to play for because they're at this very moment uh, at the um, eighth spot, but the Los Angeles uh, Sparks are right behind them, and any misstep will cause them to you know move back down to the ninth spot. So uh, I was expecting the Chicago Sky uh, to play play hard. And give a tough time to uh, the New York Liberty, but to start this uh, first quarter that has you know a very high uh, high pace, I was kind of surprised by the sort of complacency that the Liberty had in in this game. You could tell that you know defensively they were not putting the the efforts that we accustomed them to uh, uh, to have, and even though fans were flowing offensively, the the defense was kind of lacking and. Uh, Felt like Mabry and, and Kalia Copper were kind of, you know, pretty much doing whatever they, they wanted to against the, the Liberty. Yeah, I mean, the Liberty's defense, everyone looked a bit slow, um, a bit too relaxed, I think. Um, you know, yeah, the offense was, was clicking, but also Chicago knows. Chicago's fighting for a spot. Yeah. They are, you could tell, they were in it. They were trying to win this game, and... You know, yeah, the Liberty just seemed a bit lethargic on defense. Mm. And, yeah, Kalia Copper definitely had some quick shots, as did Mabry with some amazing threes. And so, you know, they're dangerous. That's the Mm. thing for the Chicago Sky. Like, yeah, you know, they lost Sloot and and Parker and, and really important players. And so, but... You still got Copper. You still got Mabry. You can't let up because definitely when you see Kalia Copper, she doesn't let up. And she makes sure to keep her team yeah. in this game. And she, she definitely was. She was putting the team on her back. And you could definitely tell that from the start of this game. And so, you know, it was tight. And I, I really thought that I was like, this might come down to the wire. You know, the first 
few quarters there, you're just like, huh, are the Liberty, are they going to give this game away? Mm. Not give it away, like they, they're not going to play. Yeah. But what I mean by that is just like, I just felt like Chicago was just too close for a team that should be dominating Chicago. And, and Chicago's tough. There's no question about it. But I will have to say, Courtney Vandersloot had Ooh. herself a time coming back to Chicago. Back home, or should I say. She's back home and back on her old court. And <sighs> she was quite comfortable um, from the start of this game. Opening it up with triples, assists, steals. It was just, it was crazy. Rebounds. I mean, she didn't have as many rebounds as JJ or Stewie. But, I mean, she clocked numbers in almost every category. I think Stewie, uh, after the game, <laughs> said that, you know, jokingly, that I think we're going to have to work on your on your rebounding skills or work on that you know meaning that she missed like five rebounds to potentially get a triple double um but like you said she was everywhere she mm-hmm. even blocked like a couple of times some of the guards like yeah. coming back quickly and just blocking them out of nowhere there was definitely maybe that extra motivation to be back in in chicago mm-hmm. and that's the vendor of 2021 when the sky won the title Obviously, they had great players on that squad, but Sloot, the general, was the person that gave the tempo. And I remember that extraordinary playoff run that they had, and, and Sloot was definitely one of the key pieces of that team. So it was incredible to see her play the way she did um, against Chicago. And uh, I feel like, you know, she kind of sort of rectified certain things or things that she was kind of lacking uh free point shots uh, i know that i've been quite critical uh this season about um you know vendors free three point shots who was pretty much the the lowest of a career since the rookie season and a couple of times where you know the the aces i remember particularly just let her shoot um i was a little bit worried about that because obviously she she always finds ways to uh contribute or if you know she sees that they force her to shoot a free that she would get into the paint or find an open player but in this game five for seven from the free point line um she shot with confident confidence and and yeah she really like helped the team when the chicago sky was really pushing to really make create the upset um and you know we have players, uh, you know, in the Chicago Sky team that could get on fire anytime. And uh, particularly think of Courtney, Courtney Williams, um, who had, you know, in the past killed the Liberty a few times, especially yeah. when she played with the Dream uh, last year. When I remember that game where she got on fire and was unstoppable in the fourth quarter and created the upset. Um, but this time around, you know, she was fairly quiet. It, it took her maybe like end of the f- the second quarter to start, you know, scoring a, a first basket. And uh, at this moment, I felt like, ooh, like she might, you know, get a rhythm. But, you know, that fourth quarter from the Liberty, um, they were down by one at some point at the beginning of that fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, you got to think about watching this game it always, you know, it's only a few points. They're only a few points ahead of the sky. It, to me, it just seemed like this is going to be a tight game. Yeah. This is going to be like if they win, they might win by like three to five points. Because even up into the third quarter, at the end of the third quarter, you thought, okay, the last quarter is going to be tight. And then, yeah, the Chicago sky came in. They scored the first four points. And, you know, yeah, uh, Brianna Stewart got fouled, so she had gotten, um, she made one of her free throws, one of two. And, yeah, they were only up by one at that point, this Mm. guy. And after that, it was all she wrote because (laughs) at some point, Sloot and people, everybody woke up at some point. There was a blackout on Chicago City. Um, but yeah, like Stewie started getting on fire. She scored her first free in a very long time. I think she missed uh, prior to that that game her last sixteen uh, frees. So it, it felt good to see Stewie, uh, mm-hmm. you know, finally scoring one. But she was doing other things as well. There was even that play when she missed a corner free, grabbed the whole her own rebound, got into the paint, and got an N one. Uh, she was doing everything. Uh, she needed to do to get a team going. Uh, Vendor Sloot, we mentioned uh, prior, was uh, doing a little bit of everything. 
uh, but Nigel Lenny being aggressive and uh, you know be there for the fast breaks and, and scoring some easy uh, layups. Um, yeah, it, at that point it was a 22-0 run. Yeah, for the and, Liberty, and that's the team that you thought you would see the whole game. I mean, luckily for them, they woke up in the fourth quarter, and it was something that you know initially you're like, ah, oh, this this game. They just seemed complacent on defense mm. in particular. You know, the offense was going, but. It just seemed it. It just seemed a little lethargic, and they just seemed kind of automatic. Nothing really sparked the team. But then in the fourth quarter, that twenty-two and zero run, and just to see everyone contribute, and yeah, the and shots, and also shots not going down for Chicago because Chicago also had they had some good looks. The shots yeah. just weren't going down, and the Liberty um, definitely capitalized off of that. I mean, Stewie, after the game, said that they just continue to keep their composure and stay poised, and that really started with their defense. And, mm-hmm. you know, we always say defense wins championships, and they definitely proved it in that quarter, and the crowd got really quiet because they were so pumped up, um, you know, in the third quarter. Uh, yeah. They even had, um, you know, their rookie, Sika Kone, who was initially with the Liberty uh, at training camp and, and got cut. That scored a few baskets in the paint against Tui and cutting to the basket, offering, you know, uh, some presence in the paint. Uh, and the crowd was really pumped up. But after that 22-0 run and, and the defense that the Liberty show, um, the crowd got quiet. And, you know, while I thought it was going to be a, a tough, tough game, ended up being a quite comfortable one uh, by the end of the fourth quarter. And that's the true sign of a championship team. I feel like, I don't know, like there's something about the Liberty team where they just don't lose their composure. Like, you know, there's, there's going to be runs from other teams at times, but they know what to do uh, to sort mm-hmm. of come back and win those games. They figure things out every single time. They offer so many uh, solutions that... Like, it's starting to be really difficult to beat that team. Yeah, I think, you know, the Liberty definitely, when they realize, you know, they get on each other. That they realize, like, we've been complacent this whole game. Like, we're not doing what we should be doing to put this game away. Mm. And they still have one more quarter to do it, and they did that. And you could just see that dominance. And the thing for SLU is that, you know, for her getting open looks to the, you know, at three, it's just... Because she's kind of struggled, she struggled this year at the three-point line. It's like teams are kind of opening, like, ah, well, let's Slew shoot. And now it's like, oh, you might want to rethink that strategy. (laughs) Because there are a few times where she was wide open and those threes started to go down. And obviously she's back home, old stomping ground. She's comfortable probably on that court as well. So, But either way, Slew is having herself a time in these last few games. And overall, I think the Liberty have just done an amazing job at even if there's lulls and there's going to be lulls in games and and things kind of go back and forth between teams but for the liberty to keep them keep their heads in the game keep that composure and poise and know who they are and know we can still win this game no matter if we're 10 points down or 20 points down Mm. every quarter every bucket counts every possession counts and they really do that and they they went after it and you know unfortunately for the sky buckets weren't going in and you know the liberty the liberty took control yeah so the the liberty took that game 86 to uh, 69 and unfortunately for the chicago sky with that loss they just lost the the last uh, playoff spots uh and are now ninth uh in the regular season so it's going to be very interesting uh, last week of the regular season because mm-hmm. there's a lot of teams pretty much from 4th to ninth now. Uh, anything can happen. And it feels yeah. like uh, each day uh, there's a different uh, first-round matchup for the Liberty. Like, you know, one day they're facing potentially the Atlanta Dream. One day is the Mystics. One day it's, uh, you know, the Minnesota Lynx. And uh, right now, at this very moment, it would be... Uh, the Washington Mystics, who are seventh, um, you know, after losing um, against the, the Sparks this past weekend. And uh, unfortunately for the Mystics, once again, uh, it seems like they lost uh, a player, Christy uh, Tolliver, uh, who had a serious knee injury, unfortunately, in the game against the Sparks. So 
a very, very tough season for the Mystics because uh, they've been affected by so many injuries. So it's really hard to figure out, you know, what sort of Mystics teams you would potentially face in the first round. But personally, I still feel like if we can avoid them, that, that will be great. But we still have... There's still a couple games left, and the final game is will be against the Mystics. So it's going to be a big game regardless, um, but it's really going to be a big game for the Mystics because that could determine where they end up in the standing since all these teams from 4 through 9 are vying for these playoff spots. And I think this week will definitely, I think at the end of this regular season, it's going to come down to the wire for a lot of teams. So, if you're Sandy Brandello, what would you do if you were her in terms of, like, the, the last week of the regular season? Because, to be fair, for the Liberty, there's not much to, uh, you know, compete for. They still have a tiny little hope for the first, uh, you know, first seed, but it would be very unlikely. You have, obviously, uh, you know, um, Sabrina Ionescu that could potentially beat uh, Diana Taurasi's uh, three-point record. Uh, you have Brianna Stewart now, obviously, uh, you know, still compete for the MVP trophy. Um, you know, I would feel like, except except Pryor, because on Tuesday they're facing the Dallas Wings uh, in Dallas, and if we remember the last time uh, they faced each other, uh, Dallas, you know, gave us a pretty awakening uh, loss uh, at the Barclays. And so I'm sure the Liberty will have a heart to uh, rectify that and show them that it was just a misstep. Um, but I can't help but thinking, like, we're going to have to be really careful with the rotations and and is it really worth it to put so much effort into those games? I appreciated the fact that, you know, Willoughby had had more playing time lately. Mm-hmm. She scored 10 points uh, in that game against Chicago. So... If you were Sandy, what would you do? Would you give more playing time to the bench players, like Andrew, for example? Uh, what would I think you, do? you have to see how the game flows. I think for the Liberty, they have gelled very well in the second half of this season. But the last thing you want, yeah, you want to protect the players for the playoffs, but the last thing you want is for them to become complacent. Mm. Because the one thing for the Liberty is that, yes, they can turn it back on and get their heads in the game. But I I still think there are still things that they're trying to tweak. Even though they look fantastic, there's there's still things they're going to have to tweak with one another. Mm. You know, especially even if Sabrina, say, doesn't play against Dallas tomorrow, they want to take precaution and she plays the next two games after that. Um, You still need Maureen to to get into that good rhythm with Sloot. You still need people like Kayla Thornton and and others, you know, just to kind of get into the game and you don't want to just, you just don't want to give up games. I Mm. think for them, they want to win these games. And also they see a chance of taking the number one seed. Mm. Yeah. I would say it's unlikely, but also Phoenix ain't just going to lie down and get beaten by Vegas, you know? So it's not going to be, easy and so you know i think they do want to win i think they do want to take a number one seed if they can and everyone's healthy everyone's doing well um i could see sandy switching it up a bit by having more bench players in Mm. there like willoughby maybe you know sabali as well but Mm. i think sabali needs needs some more time so maybe these are the games where you put them in there just Mm. to kind of see Han Shu, I think Han Shu deserves more time too. Yeah. The crowd know? has been asking yeah. for her. Quite, the crowd has been asking for her, but they tend to ask for Han Shu the last minute or two of the game, and I I just don't think that's fair to her. She's not a prop. Mm. She's not just the entertainment at the last minute of a game. I think. But we were I, not we were not too far from her. Uh, she was warming up on mm-hmm. on on the bike, um, and that's at that very moment that the crowd was asking for her. And asking Sandy to put her on the court. And, you know, she was, we saw her, like, throwing, like, art signs. Uh, yeah, art she signs was really to the crowd. She Like, she was very play. appreciative yeah. of the, all the love. Yeah. But like you said, it did, you know, you kind of feel awkward at times. Where I it's just like, feel like if you can put in some of your bench players early, um, if the Liberty have a, a decent enough lead, it doesn't have to be a huge lead. But mm. even if they're up by 10... 
why not play her? Why not play Han for a couple minutes? See what she can do. And then you can take her out. Mm -hmm. Give her a chance, you know, to to be in there. Because her height alone, like, Mm -hmm. even seeing her in the last game, yeah, she, the the rebound, just tipping balls out, the fact just her height alone can give you second, second, third chances Mm -hmm. if she's in the paint. So I just think if Sandy can bring her in earlier and try to incorporate her in a little bit earlier, that would help than bringing her in just like the last two minutes of the game. All right, so we will see, uh, you know, what is going to happen. So Tuesday, they will face the Dallas Wings in Dallas. And then on uh, Thursday, they will face the LA Sparks at the Barclays. And we will finish the regular season home on Sunday. Uh, against the Washington Mystics. So wow. kind of excited uh, for the regular season to come to an end. And, you know, I think now we're ready for the playoff mm-hmm. and uh, cannot wait for, for this atmosphere. And, and, you know, I love exciting basketball ahead of us. And we'll definitely be there uh, to share and report everything that the Liberty will do in the playoffs. So thank you so much once again for uh, listening to our podcast. Uh, and as we always say, Felicia... Let's Let's go go Liberty! Liberty!